crux here for a lot of the dogs that are difficult, that have difficult behavior problems, and leash reactivity being one of them, is internal reinforcement. And internal reinforcement, I will also call these self-reinforcing behaviors. And there are dogs that are wired in a certain way to find certain kinds of activities they feel good, right? There's a reason dogs chase things, for instance. Chasing things feels good. It's not all about catching them, right? Your dog may chase squirrels, and you may never catch a squirrel. But the more they chase squirrels, the more into it they get. They're like addicts. They're like, oh, a squirrel, I gotta chase it, I gotta chase it. Why? Because there's a big chemical dump in their brain and body that feels good, right? And there are, there are certain types of dogs that are wired to produce more of these chemicals and that are wired to find those more satisfying. Just like in human beings, there are thrill-seeking personalities, right? They're the people that jump out of planes and rock climb and free solo and do crazy stuff like that, and they think it's fantastic. And there are other people like, oh, I never want to do that, no, right? <laughs> like, not, not give me a charge. The people that really, and in your brain, the, the fear and pleasure and excitement centers are very much the same place. They're, they mimic, the, they hit the same place in the brain and similar things are happening there, right? That's why people like scary movies and stuff, right? There's an excitement there, that's kind of fun, I get a charge out of that, right, kind of thing. And so it's true in dogs too, and they're dogs that like this feeling. Adrenaline, endorphins, endorphins endogenous morphine, right? We manufacture our own opioids, right, which are addictive. <laughs> they feelings of euphoria, they kill pain. Dopamine, which is a chemical that drives goal-oriented behavior, is produced in certain situations. And so when a dog begins to recognize a situation, they get a big dopamine spike, which drives the behavior, and that's a charge. It energizes them, right? And dogs, some dogs produce more of these chemicals, and some dogs probably have more receptors to receive them in their brains, and it feels good to a certain dog. And it won't to another, right? You let one dog woof at things a few times, and it gives it up, right? One dog barks a little bit at new stuff for a bit, and then it just goes away. They're like, oh. Now, it wasn't that exciting, and it didn't really solve any of my problems, so whatever, I'm fine now, right? Another dog doesn't take very many rehearsals, and they're into it, right? We see this all the time in dogs when we do bite work with them, right? I take a young protection dog, and you know the moment they turned on. It's like flicking a light switch. You see a normal puppy that's chasing a rag around, and they're pouncing on it and mouthing it and playing with it. And then you watch the dog when the switch flips, and they're like, oh, wow. And he slips it out, and it runs away, and they're like, oh, pulling at the end of the leash. Their whole body's vibrating. You're like, woo, something happened there, right? And you can see the moment that the addiction started, right? And that internal reinforcement, the tricky part about that is the dog has a reinforcement history, too. If they've practiced it, it's been reinforced, sometimes internally, sometimes externally frequently both, right, in those cases. But on top of that, but when, you, when they do it, if I respond after they've reacted, I'm too late. It's like giving a dog a reward and then hitting them afterwards. Giving a dog a reward and then hitting them afterwards, right? It's not gonna work, right? Because they've already been reinforced. And so here comes the lesson of the day that if you have dogs that have really decided that they like this, that of getting some form of strong internal reinforcement, then we have to prevent them from rehearsing it and we have to be preemptive. Reacting after they've reacted will do you no good whatsoever, right? And you'll get dogs that react and then go afterwards, right? So I can punish them, but they'll still do it. It's almost like they can't help it, right? And then you correct them and they'll show like avoidance behavior after you did it but you haven't eliminated it, right? And the way to get rid of it, of course, is to prevent them until the addiction goes. So internal reinforcement, I, I use a lot of, when we're talking behavior modification and things like that, and when I'm talking about internal reinforcement, use a lot of the same terminology that we'd use in terms of human addiction, right? And what do they say about addicts? Once an addict, always an addict, right? So you, when you slip, you don't just go off a little. I'm on the wagon for a year, oops. I'm way off the wagon, right? And it's a little like this with this certain type of dog, right? Now, not all dogs are going to be like this, right? There are dogs that, that are doing these behaviors without that level of commitment. But when we see a lot of certain types of breeds, especially in certain types of dog, working type dogs, increasingly we see people with working dogs in pet dog and companion dog homes, right? People have working line German Shepherds and they're walking around downtown San Francisco where I am, right? Like, and so you get a dog that's been genetically selected to get a charge out of this stuff, right? And so if you let them practice it very much, 
they will be an addict, right? If you enjoy our videos, we post our social media videos to our website, Learberg.com, a week or two before we post them to our YouTube channel. These early release videos can be found on the front page of our site or by going to the site and selecting video on demand from the toolbar and then select free. Thank you for watching.